Hi all, Simon here from Computer Tutoring. And this time I want to talk about how to use a green screen in Microsoft Teams. But first of all, why would you want to use a green screen? Well, this all has to do with what's known as background effects or virtual backgrounds. This is where you have a background, a graphic that's provided maybe by your company or you've put forth great effort to create yourself and you want to put that behind you. Now, the problem is in Microsoft Teams is when you do that and you're really proud of yourself, it, you get this gelatinous sort of moldy thing going around you. It looks like your kids cut you out with scissors. It doesn't look that professional. So what do you do? You go out and you invest in one of these. You go back to Microsoft Teams, you turn it on and yeah, it just seems worse. Hence this tutorial, how do you use a green screen with Microsoft Teams. I just know as soon as I release this video, Microsoft in Teams is going to have a little checkbox that says, do you want to use a green screen? We're doing it next week, aren't we? Well, no! Okay, so if you're going to use one of these, okay, you're going to need one of these. That's because the more creases you have on your green screen, will make your virtual background, that background effect, look that little bit more amateurish. If you want it looking absolutely slick, then you've got to get the iron out. That's if you're using a sheet. I mean, if you're using a pull-up stand type thing or a fixed green screen on the back of your chair, you might not need this. Well, I hope you don't. All right, so the next thing we need to do is hang the green screen. Once you've... Uh hung your green screen and you've got your lights. Now the lights that I'm using actually, they're two that I don't think I've spent more than 45 pounds for them. I'll give you links down below. Um, the things that I'm looking for in the lights are, are the fact that I can make them brighter, Ooh, like so, and not so bright. And also you can clip them onto the table and different things. So if you've got clips and clamps, etc., that really is very, very useful. So if you're able to do that, Great, so once you've got that done, and the idea is, is trying to flatten out your green screen. Now, as I said before, the only space I've got to do my training is I'm in the corner of my room in my um, in London. So um, yeah, I, I need to try and make this as flat as possible. I always get these shadows. Sometimes having these is a bit bright, but you're not really gonna know until you actually start using the OBS. Okay, you've hung your green screen in the corner. It's looking good, as flat as you can, getting rid of all the shadows, and you sorted your lights out. And uh, now I just want to talk about OBS. Now, OBS stands for Open Broadcaster Software. And it's the software that you're going to use in conjunction with your green screen to create what's known as a chroma key. It will create that sharp virtual background. We will then use another feature in OBS known as a virtual camera. And we'll use this virtual camera to broadcast the image from OBS into Microsoft Teams. So let's get going, shall we? So if I just um, fire up um, Chrome, uh, let's just open up a new window in Chrome here. Let's drag it across the screen here. Let's have a look at OBS uh, download. And there we go, download OBS Studio. Choose your um, operating system. Let me just see over here. So I'm going to go for Windows, but of course it works on Mac OS and Linux there. So let's go to this one, download installer. Uh, the installer will download. Let's just um, click on my downloads here. There we go. Um, just gonna download it. And then once it's download, let, oh, here we go, download it. I'm just gonna open it up. Okay, so let's go to next, uh, next, and install. Great, excellent. So I'm not going to launch OBS just yet. It's best to restart, and I've restarted my computer. So that's the thing that we'll need to do. You just need to restart the computer. Great, so now I've got that. What I need to do is load up my OBS. So let's do that, show. If I search for OBS Studio, so just do the Windows OBS. There's a little link as well on the desktop just here, which is great. Um, and here we go. Uh, so we set in the UI additional docs and um, okay, I'll say yes, I'll reset it. Okay, so next thing is asking, okay, what do I want to use this open broadcaster software for? So I want to use it for the virtual camera. So I'm going to check I will only be using the virtual camera here and I'm going to click on next. 
And then it gives me some results here as to the resolution. I'm looking at HD at 1080 here, or 1920 by 1080. So that's good. I'm just going to apply those settings. That's good. Let me just maximize this so you can see everything here. Great. So what I've got here is I've got one scene. You can have many scenes within OBS, but I sometimes find if I have one scene and I've got many devices that they can sometimes sort of get in each other's way and I get echo effects or cameras don't work or not. So I'm just going to keep to the one scene here. Although, yes, you can have other scenes. Of course you can. I need to add a source in. So I'm going to click on this little plus button just down here at the bottom. OK, and I'm going to go up to and choose a uh, image capture device. Where is it here? Uh, video capture device, you see, just here. Give that a click. And this capture device is my camera that I'm using. So it's a Logitech C920. So that's the camera I've got. I don't know if you can see it just in here. Oops, a bit of dust on that there. So this camera is, I mean, I've been using it for years and it's the best, really, really, really is good. Now, I have recently upgraded to a Canon M50, uh, what I'm recording this on, and I do my web, um, my web training, my online training with the Canon M50, but the Logitech C920 is a fantastic bit of kit. You know, it's just a go where anywhere thing. I, I wouldn't use the camera that comes with your laptop. That's just, oh, forget it. So there we go. I'm going to create a new capture device, Logitech C920. Click on OK. OK, and there's my camera there. And it's automatically picked me up, which is great. Hello. Need to sort of adjust here. First thing is, is it's not seem, it doesn't seem to be in HD. It looks really small. Um, so what I need to do is just adjust this revolu um, revolution, <laughs> resolution type. We are the revolution. So the resolution type here. So to custom and changing this drop down list to 1920 by 1080 and then click on OK. And you can see it's taking up now the full width of your screen. OK, so the next thing you might need to do is adjust the uh, camera. Now, I have a little gimbal thing just um, here. So it allows me to adjust the uh, camera, which you can't really see it there. But, you know, you can see I'm very easily moving my camera and I can quickly just whack it on and fix it. So it cost me about 26 quid. It is a small bit of kit for quite a bit of money, but you don't really need to. If you just want to whack the web webcam on, that's fine. But this tiny little uh, ball gimbal thing, I don't know what it's called. Uh, yeah, small rig. A small rig there. Again, I'll give you a link down below of what that one is um, or superimpose it over this video. So what I want to make sure is if I, I've got to make sure that I don't get any of the edge bit here. You can see a bit of my laptop here and I don't want to make, make sure I don't get any of the wall. So just adjust me. So I'm right in the middle of the video and yeah, that's great. So the next thing you need want, wanting to do is you're wanting to try to adjust your lights so that I'm nice, bright enough, but the background is as sort of flat as possible. You know, um, I can see I've got a couple of shadows here. If I sometimes angle the lights away, it's not so obvious. I angle that light away. It's not as obvious, but sometimes it is. Which, uh, let's have a look at that shadow. Uh, yeah, that's good. I can lower the brightness of certain lights as well. That's good, which might adjust it. And the, there's a good light compensation on the camera as well, which is really good. So next thing I need to do is I need to add in a picture. Uh, let's add in a picture here. So I'm going to click on this little plus just here and I'm going to go to image, click on image. And I'm going to call this one CT background for computer tutoring background. And I think I've got some logo images, etc. So I'm going to click on OK. I'm going to go to browse and it will hopefully take me to my images. No, it hasn't. So I've just got to browse quickly for my images. I think I've got some under zoom background somewhere down here. There we go. And then I'll use this blue one with a bit of gradient on it there. Sometimes having a little gradient is really good. It helps sort of like make the effect look a bit more, you know, sharper, you know, because the eyes are being fooled by the gradient. I don't know, but there we go. Uh, let's click on OK. And then what I'm going to do is drag. And uh, don't you can see here, I can drag the CT background underneath that Logitech C20 there. So I've just sort of dragged it beneath. So now what I need to do is add a filter to this Logitech C920. So if you right click on that and go to filters and then where it says effect filters just down here at the bottom if you click on that plus just here okay and then we're going to go add and add what's called a chroma key effect so a chroma whoops let's bring it back there it's going to be a chroma key effect so i'll keep that as chroma key click on okay helps me remember so there we have the chroma key and the idea of this the way that this goes is is and that's why i've added the background in first so i can actually see 
um, my computer tutoring background that I'm going to use for my training, is you adjust the similarity just here. So you can see here how I'm adjusting the similarity so that the background shines through. Yeah, uh, this this sort of page just here, this bit here, don't really weigh too much about it. I, it goes a bit speckledy sometimes, but there we go. But what you're looking at is you're looking at the background and you can see around here-ish, it's just a bit speckledy, that type of thing. And if I just, um, let's just drag that down a bit. Yeah, it's just around there. You can adjust other things as well, like the gamma, give you a bit more contrast as well. So adjust it. So when you're adjusting the similarity, I mean, if you go too much, you start disappearing. <gasps> no, it's like back to the future, you know, um, being erased from existence. So yeah, so you want to be careful of that. Uh, there, you've got a contrast option that you can change here as well. Uh, one of the things as well is this key color type is green. If I click on this drop down list here and go down to custom, you can see it's looking for a bright green. But if I just hide the chroma key, you can see that this green sheet isn't exactly like 100% bright, you know, fluorescent type green. So what I'm gonna do is I can select a color and I get this color thing coming up here. And so what I wanna do is I wanna sort of make you know, this color the same as say this color here. All right, so what I just do, unfortunately I can't click on this here. I don't know if there's a right click or I can, but yeah, I never worked out how that's all done. But what I can do is I can just adjust this to try and make that color as much of the same as that color as possible. You know, whether it's more bluish, if you think more greenish, you know, that looks good. And I can just go here and that looks good and click on okay. And then when I add my chroma key effect in, I might just adjust the similar, similar, similarity again. It'll give me a little bit more effect there. There we go. That's good. I still have a speckledy bit, but I can just adjust that a tiny bit and that's good. Cool. All right. Really looks good. So next thing I just want to add here is another filter that might help make help you out here. And if I click on here, there's a color correction filter just here. If I click on OK. So what you can do is, is uh, let's just move that up to the top by using this little arrow here. So what I can do here is if I hide the chroma key, is it's still it's quite washed out the colors. So what I can do is I can add saturation in the colors here to make that green really green. What you want is a difference, a marked contrast between the green, nice flat green background, and yourself uh, as well. So you can adjust the saturation. I wouldn't bother with the hue shift, gamma, and contrast. Again, you can adjust as well. You know, just to make sure it's bright. I mean, if it's like that, so you just want bright green basically. There we go. That's it. Great, excellent. Um, I might be a little bit red there, but there we go. So now when I add my chroma key in and I go to my chroma key, uh, what I probably want to do here is reselect the color because the color's not great. Or I could probably go to, let's try green, shall we? Let's go straight to green here. There we go. Add in that chroma key. That's great. And then just the similar, there we go. And that looks a little better. Yeah, let's have a quick look, see. Is it speckledy? I need to check around the top of my afro. Looking sharp, looking good. You can also test this with different backgrounds as well. So if I go down here and click on plus and do image again to add a new image, and I'll call this one pink backgrounds. Okay, okay. And then here I'll browse for a file and hopefully comes up with a pink gradient. There we go. Uh, just drag this down to the bottom underneath my, oops, wrong way around, camera. And you can have a quick look and yeah, it's still looking good. Pretty good there. I'm a little bit red there, so I might want to adjust it a little bit, but yeah, I'll be, I'll be fine with that. So the next thing we need to do is we need to then broadcast this in Microsoft Teams. So if I click on Start Virtual Camera, and then I'm going to go to Microsoft Teams and start a meeting. And then the idea is, is that I can broadcast that virtual camera, or I can pick up that virtual camera through Teams. So I'm going to click on Meet at the top here. That's great. And normally you would just say, when I click on these like setup just here, Normally it would be the HDMI, the HD cam, et cetera, and it wouldn't look that great, uh, okay? But uh, what I can do now is I have the access to this OBS virtual camera. Uh, so for instance, if I click on HP Pro just here, okay, so what I'd normally do is under background filters, I click on the background filters just here, I would choose my background, I'll choose this blue one, say here, click on join the meeting, and what I'll do is I'll make the window bigger so you can just see how bad that green screen is. I mean, I don't think even it's, if it works, I mean, Microsoft say, you yeah, have a plain background for Teams to make it a little easier, but I, I think it's just somehow worse even with a green screen. So what I'm gonna do is join the meeting. There we go. So this is what I'd have. Let's just maximize the window and close off the device settings so you can really see, ooh, you know, it looks like some sort of blancmange around the Afro going on. If I do this here, I could sort of actually connect. See what I mean? It's just 
yeah. You know, it looked like I got a green glow like that. The green lantern. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to open OBS. So let's open OBS here. So there we go. I'm going to click on this button that says start virtual camera just down here at the bottom. Okay, so then I'm going to click back on this meeting. And then if I go back into device settings just here, and instead of the camera being HD Web Pro, HD Pro webcam C920, I'm going to click on this drop down list. And now I've got OBS virtual camera. Again, if you don't have that there, try restarting your computer and hopefully it will pick it up there. That's great. So now I've got this one here. What I'm also going to do before I switch it on is turn off the background effects because the background is on the virtual camera. So I go to this, uh, sorry, I hope, you know, maybe you missed that there. Go to these ellipses just down here and go to background effects. And then you can click on this top one, which means none. Apply and turn on video. And there we go. Not bad. I mean, if I click and sort of see, you know, I'm not getting that little gap in between. I do have a tiny little green glow around that little bit, but that can be adjusted. I mean, you can go back into your OBS. If I went into my OBS here, well, it's covering the screen, so I'm just going to drag it off the screen for the time being. I'm going to go to my Logitech. Um, let me just show you where I'm going because it doesn't much help off the screen. So literally, I'm going to right click on the Logitech and go to filters just here to bring up that filter. Go to my chroma key just here. If I drag this off here. I can start adjusting this similarity and it will appear directly in Teams. See here? So if I can just adjust and that, you can do this one here, like the smoothness, I can reduce it all the way down so there's no smoothness. We'll add a bit of smooth edge here. Uh, just adjust it so I can get it just perfect, you know, which is great. Uh, it never is going to be absolutely, you know, wonderfully perfect, but it's still a lot better than what it is. Of course, if you're getting shadows under your arms, etc., uh, then you might want to turn up your lights, etc. Yeah, that's good. Excellent. All right, then. So there we go. That's there how you would use that chroma key and it looks far better. And anything that you do, if I just drag here, so anything you do in this OBS, so say I don't want a pink background, I want now a, this, the blue background. If I hide the pink background and now my background's blue. Now in a future video, what I'll do is I'll show you all of the different options that you can have here, um, which is pretty cool, you know, especially when you're doing training. You know, many people ask me, how do I train Teams from Teams or Zoom from Zoom? You know, it's crazy. So yeah, you can do it within this. So there you go, there you have it. That's how you can use a green screen in Microsoft Teams. I hope that you'll get benefit from this tutorial. It will just give your presentations that little extra edge, just a little sharper. So if you've got anything out of this tutorial video, video, give us a thumbs up, really appreciate it. So our next tutorial, we'll look at the voice syncing issue. So it's not, uh, no, 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 yes, yes, yes. If you've seen Singing in the Rain, you'll know what I mean, to make sure it's in harmony. That's what we're going to look for. So if you haven't already done so, click on subscribe and then click on that notifications bell. Take care, guys, and thank you so much for watching.